Hey everybody, Ryan here at eTrailer. Today on our 2022 Chevy Equinox, we're gonna be showing you how to install the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms. But before we get into that, I'll just take a minute, check this out and make sure it's gonna work for you. The chances are pretty good. Uh, you know, you're not always going to be flat on your Equinox. And so one of the things that I feel like would be important to myself would be, how's it gonna look, right? And so this is how everything's set up. And it's not too bad by any means. I mean, obviously you can see there's something there, but you know, it isn't crazy. Uh, compared to some of the other base plates available, it's really not a whole lot different. They're all uh, relatively close on, on how they're gonna look and how things are positioned and whatnot. Uh, one of the things that separates this one a little bit from some of the others though, is the finish of it. So it's more of a matte black. All right, not a huge game changer by any means, but personally, I think it, um, you know, matches the plastic a little bit better. Just helps kind of blend in. Um, one, one thing that does kind of separate this from some of the others as well is not all of them are gonna come with brackets that allow you to mount up your wiring connector and your breakaway switch. So that's a nice touch. You don't have to worry about kind of fabbing something up yourself. Uh, it's already in place and uh, there for you to use. Something else obviously really important is how easy is the setup gonna to be to use, right? You don't want something that's a huge pain uh, to set up every time you're ready to flat toe. This one really isn't too bad at all. It has these removable arms. And so when you are ready to hook up, you're gonna pull these caps out, which I give you just to help keep stuff out from getting inside of there. But you're just gonna put these in and rotate them about a quarter turn until they lock into place. It'll be set up the same way on the other side. So really straightforward. And now this is gonna give you an attachment point. That way uh, you can hook your tow bar up to it. So this particular setup um, will work with most Blue Ox tow bars and some of the other manufacturers as well. Uh, let's say for example, if you already have a Roadmaster tow bar um, and you really like this base plate and you're concerned about them being able to link up together, um, now there's a ton of different adapters available that you can pick up that simply just change the ends out on that tow bar and that will allow you to connect everything up. So there's gonna be a total of five main parts that you're gonna need to flat tow your Equinox down the road. Uh, first one's gonna be the base plate. That's gonna provide us with a solid attachment point. That way we can hook our tow bar up to it. That tow bar is gonna be the set component. So that's gonna connect the back of your motor home to the front of the Equinox and be the physical link that's actually towing the vehicle behind it. Uh, the third main component will be safety cables. So these will clip on to the front of your Equinox and to the back of your motor home. And those are there in the event of an unlikely disconnect. They're gonna keep everything paired together. The fourth main component will be your tow bar wiring. And what that's gonna do is transfer the lighting functions from the back of your coach to the back of your Chevy, keeping you safe and legal. And last but not least, the fifth main component will be a supplemental braking system. And what that's gonna do is apply the brakes in your SUV whenever you hit the brakes in your motorhome, uh, helping to bring you to a more complete and predictable stop. Other than that, at the end of the day, um, you really can't ask for too much more. It looks pretty good, uh, easy to set up, and easy to use. As far as getting it installed, um, you know, it's, I wouldn't say it's super difficult, more time consuming than anything. You do will have to drill some holes out, uh, take the face off, so be prepared to spend, spend some time on it for sure. Uh, but, as long as you stay focused, hopefully our video can help you get going in the right direction and make it a little easier on you. And um, hopefully it's something you can get done. But speaking of that, if you'd like to uh, hang around, we'll go ahead and install it together now. To begin our installation, we're gonna be here at the front of our Equinox and we need to get the front fascia removed. So first thing you wanna do is pop the hood. We're gonna have three uh, Torx bit fasteners on each side of our hood latch. Uh, so, We'll take a T15 and get those removed. I want to mention from this point on, anything we do to one side of the vehicle, we're also going to do to the other side because it'll be set up the same way. Now if you move in front of your front tire, 
on this wheel wall liner edge here. We're gonna have several fasteners. It looks like five of them uh, that we need to pull out. Just work our way down here. And I'm using a T15 to get uh, all these out as well. Now, if you take the wheel wall liner, just kind of peel it back out of the way. Right here where the quarter panel meets the front fascia on the inside of it, there's gonna be a fastener. It's gonna have a seven millimeter head and we're gonna to have to pull that out. So if you look underneath the vehicle now, along this edge, we're gonna have this little uh, air diffuser deal. And I'm gonna pull these off just so we can have more adjustability with our wheel wall liner when we go to pull the fascia off. Uh, but there's a total of four bolts. There's seven millimeter in size. And this will just pop off and we can set it to the side. On each side of our fascia now, there's also gonna be three more screws. And we'll pull those out again using a seven millimeter. So what we need to do now is unsnap this silver piece that runs along the length of our headlight. This is actually part of the fascia. And so I put some painter's tape along all the areas we're gonna be working, because we're gonna have to pry this out. And um, I sprayed some soapy water in there too, just to help kind of lubricate everything. And take your time at this part, uh, because this piece is super brittle, and essentially it's part of the whole fascia, or it looks that way. So. Definitely don't want to mess this part up, but I'm going to use some trim panel tools. This wedge one seems to work pretty good. And start in here. And we're just going to kind of carefully start to pry it. And if it feels like it don't want to come, you know, don't, don't keep forcing it right there. Just kind of move your way down. Try to get some things loosened up here. But what we're looking to do, there's some plastic push pin fittings uh, that's holding this in. And so we're just trying to work our way down and get them to release. We can kind of start to hear them popping a little bit. Get that one out. And if you kind of lift up on this corner and push, uh, that will release it. So if you look in here, you can kind of get an idea on, on these push pin fasteners that were in place there that were keeping this portion uh, connected to the headlight. So now with an extra set of hands, we can get our fascia removed. Start at the corner and I sprayed it down with soapy water again. And what you're gonna wanna do just kind of carefully pull out and up to release the clips. You don't get too carried away here. We might have some electrical connections, which it looks like over there on the passenger side we do. You can pull down. There's a red tab that you can pull down on. You can push down in the center. We can remove it, then we can set our fascia uh, off to the side. Here's kind of a better view of the connector. The red tab, you're going to pull back on it to dislodge it, like how we have it here. And then you can push down on the center. And while you're pushing down on the center, that will release it too. It will be pretty tight, so expect that, uh, but that's how you get it off. On the driver's side of our vehicle, we're going to remove the headlight. Uh, so there's going to be four bolts. One will be kind of tucked in this area here. And that's a seven millimeter. And on this corner, there's gonna be another seven millimeter. We're gonna have one more. This one in the corner here, because we took that fourth one off whenever we removed that radiator cover panel at the very beginning. But regardless, uh, that's another seven millimeter. And I think, unless I missed one here, and I think this should be it. We'll pull this out. And then 
We're going to disconnect it. So there's a connector and just like the fascia, push back on the red tab, down on the center. And wiring's gonna be connected. This little plastic tab here. Do. This one's really tight. I'm gonna set this down, grab a trim tool, and uh, get that popped out. If you're fighting any of these, a uh, trim tool makes easy work of it, but a flathead screwdriver uh, will also work as well. And we should be free now, and we can set this out of the way. At this point, we can remove our windshield washer uh, reservoir tank. So there's some connections, there's some lines we need to take off. This wiring, I'm just going to kind of pop all this free and then disconnect it. So these can push these clips in. This one might be set up a little different. I'll get these lines out of the way and then worry about that one. But this one you push down on. Let out. This one's the same style of clip as the other one here. You don't see these too often. And there we go. If you come in right from the bottom, like this, it pops right off. Get that out of the way. And then we can get our lines removed. So uh, what I'm going to do is unplug it here, and when you do this, get something ready to block it off. So you can either let it drain, or you know, you could take these lines off, and with the wire sucked up, you could run the pump motor and spray it all out. I really don't feel like dealing with all that, so I'm just going to take a bolt and kind of stuff it in there to plug it. Hopefully it's the right size, but we'll pop this off. Plug that, and there's this here. We can release these lines. I'm just gonna kind of get them out of the way for now. And then we can come back and get all of our bolts removed. We're gonna have a total of four uh, pieces of hardware. Three of them will be on this area, one down here, I'm using a 10 millimeter to get these out. And then the other one is going to be up along this edge by our filler tube. Here's the last one here. Not a lot of space to work with this one. I'll get that one pulled out. And then we should be able to kind of grab our tank. Pull it towards us and snake it out. I'm back underneath. Uh, we can remove this belly pan. So you're gonna have one in the dead center. That's a seven millimeter, and then several, kind of just throughout, uh, throughout it on each side. These will all be sevens. Should be the last one. Which it was, and we can drop this down for now. If you look on the driver's side, we're gonna have this air temp sensor, and we're just gonna disconnect it from our plastic housing there. So you can just take an edge and your finger and push these clips in. Kind of all at the same time. kind of pop it free from that. Then this plastic shield here, we're gonna take that off as well. So there's two pens on each 
end of it. Got the other two out already on the other side. Just pry underneath the head. And work that out. This should come off. Yeah, it pops right off and we can uh, set this to the side. Underneath our frame rail now, so we're gonna have this gusset or this pinch weld and our base plate's gonna uh, get mounted up to this. And so what they want us to do is tap this in uh, a little bit, about an eighth of an inch, I guess, to make it fit better. So get our hammer and give it a tappy. We need to remove our subframe bolts. So there's a 21 millimeter head bolt on each side of the vehicle. So you have to take both of them out and have them out at the same time. I do highly recommend supporting the subframe some way. So I just have a, a pole jack here holding this up uh, because those bolts are doing a lot of work, you know. So for those of you at home on the ground, take a jack stand or something and make sure it's supporting this just to be on the safe side. But with that said, I'll take a 21 millimeter and get this bolt pulled out. And then once we have it out, we're gonna kinda get it ready for our base plate to go on. We'll take some red Loctite, put it on the threads, and all the hardware that we're gonna use to secure the base plate is gonna receive some of this Loctite. Uh, it doesn't come in the kit. You can grab some here at each trailer. After looking at everything a little closer, this whole air shroud piece is gonna to have to come off. Uh, that way it don't hit our base plate. So there's just a couple of push pins connecting the wire to it. Pry them off and then this should slide out and we can get it out of the way. So now with an extra set of hands, we'll see if this fits. I'm gonna slide it up into place. And then we're gonna take that bolt that we removed earlier. And work it up into position and get it started hand tight. So once you have the base plate up, a lot of times it just doesn't slide right in, okay? So if you can get one of these started and then snug it down, because a lot of times the other side will fight you and what happens is there's this cutout here that goes around this portion of our subframe. You wanna get that to clear and be able to push it all the way back. So a lot of times over on the other side, that'll get hung up and not let you go all the way back. So uh, pay attention to that. You know, it may help too to hold it in place. And if you got clamps, you can clamp it and, and position it. But once you get both of these in, um, you know, take your, your socket wrench and snug them down. So what you can do now, make sure your base plate's level. So you might have a little bit of adjustability this way. Um, you know, Sooner or later you might run out of room. I pushed mine up as far as I could. That seems to be uh, pretty good. Clamped it there. And now I'm gonna drill out one hole. That way we can get a bolt in it and tighten it down and get rid of our clamp. So 3 8 drill bit. We're gonna drill through and be careful not to go flying through the other side either because you might have wires or something on the other side that you don't want to damage. So just keep that in mind. Get that opened up. We can grab our hardware and get it in place. You can take the appropriate bolt and the nylon lock nut, put your red Loctite on the threads there. That'll go through. And on the other side, we will get the nut started. Here's the other side. We'll get this nut hand tight. We're gonna snug this down. It's like a 9 16 wrench hold the nut from spinning. 916 socket on the other side. 
Once that's tight, then we can get rid of our clamp. Put this in place now and the clamp out of the way. We're gonna have four more holes here along this edge and we're gonna drill all them out. That way we can get all the bolts and whatnot in there as well. Uh, just like the first one that we did, pay attention to where you're drilling. Obviously you don't wanna hurt anything. If you need to put a block of wood or something behind here to give you some reassurance, feel free to do that, but we'll go ahead and work our way all the way around. So you got all of them drilled out and put the bolts in. So it's the same hardware combination that we used for the first one. It's your bolt, lock nut, and put your Loctite on the threads. And then once you get all of them started and hand tight, come back with our 916 wrench and socket and snug them all down. And once they're snug, we need to come back and torque down all of the hardware holding the base plate on to the amount specified in our instructions. This air dam piece that we took off, we can trim some of it out to get it back up in place. If there is a diagram in the instructions, it's uh, not super clear. So I just use my best judgment here on where we need to cut to get this to fit. And so I kind of marked that out. And the thought is, if I get rid of this piece here, then we should be able to kind of sneak that back up in place and still retain all of the parts that actually hold this on. So. I'm just taking a pair of snips. This is plastic. Uh, you could use a Dremel tool or kind of whatever you got. Well, that'll cut this out. So I kind of just slid this piece back in and we should be able to <clears throat> plug our sensor back in. And it looks like it'll fit in there. I'd have to kind of reposition it somewhat. That should do the trick, but once we have it lined up, we'll just re-secure this uh, with the original pushpin fasteners. So I went ahead and reinstalled our washer fluid reservoir the opposite way that we removed it, you know, plugged everything back in and whatnot. Uh, with one exception, this attachment point down here, you're going to use this bolt that they give you and a flat washer and use that in place of the factory one. Since you're adding that base plate, it's a little bit thicker and so this longer bolt is going to make up for that. It's taking the included safety cables and the D-links and I doubled them over and put them through this opening here in our subframe and then just use the link and the hole there in our base plate to connect everything. Same deal on the other side. And then I just like to use some zip ties and kind of you know, zip everything together. That way all this stuff isn't loose and we're not gonna have to worry about it kind of rattling around whenever we're driving down the road. I think it'd be a great opportunity to work on some of your other flat towing components like your wiring and your braking system. And I say that because obviously with the fascia off, you got a lot more room to work, right? A lot easier to route wires and everything else. So that's exactly what I'm gonna do. Um, if you're already done doing that, uh, you'd simply uh, you know, check the instructions. If you have to trim the fascia, do that and reinstall everything the opposite way. But like I said, I'm gonna get our other stuff set up and then when I'm ready to, we'll come back and get the fascia on. So now that we got the rest of our components installed on the front, we're ready to come back to our fascia and you can hold this up and get it as close as you can, you know, in terms of where you need to trim. It looks like really the only thing stopping us from putting it on per se is the wiring connector in the front. So I'm gonna cut that little area out and then hopefully we can put it on there 
and we'll have to cut more out to get to our you know our base plate tabs i guess you could call them but it looks like they sit behind there so hopefully we can get this on and then make our cuts then and probably just turn out a little bit cleaner so for now uh, i'm just going to cut out this section here that way our wiring will clear and i'm just using a pair of snips to do this could use a Dremel tool, you know, whatever, whatever you got. So we'll get this cut out, try to put it on, see if you need to make any adjustments. And that'll finish up our look at and our installation of the Blue Ox base plate kit with removable arms on our 2022 Chevrolet Equinox.